Hey guys, welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today's video is all about memory, namely the DDR4 variety. When it comes to buying DDR4 memory, there's a few things you want to keep in mind, such as speed, capacity, latency, and... Uh, what was I talking about again? Oh, that's right, memory. Anyway, for today's video, I'm going to assume you've taken the plunge, and by that I mean you've decided to buy an Intel KB Lake processor. Perhaps you're coming from a Sandy Bridge or even an AMD FX processor. Well, whatever the case is, for some crazy reason, you've decided to upgrade now and not wait for AMD's Ryzen. If that is the case, then DDR4 memory might be new to you, as the aforementioned platforms use the older DDR3 memory standard. So in this video, I'm going to show you what kind of DDR4 memory you should be on the hunt for. This guide will also apply for Skylake owners as well, since KB Lake and Skylake processors have pretty much the same memory requirements. Uh, the focus is really going to be on memory frequency and latency rather than capacity. Testing capacity is kind of its own kettle of fish, if you will. Um, it really, how much memory you will require depends on the rest of your system specifications, and probably more importantly, what it is that you plan on doing with the computer. As a rule of thumb, in 2017, we would suggest a minimum of 8GB of memory for gamers, while 16GB should be the new target. 16GB kits are actually better value anyway, as pricing starts at 70 US. Meanwhile, the cheapest dual channel 8GB kit started about $45. As always, it really comes down to your budget. If you're going with a Pentium or Core i3 processor, then skimping on an 8GB kit might make sense. On that note, if you're buying a budget processor or even a non-K Core i5-i7 processor and pairing it with a non-Z chipset, that is to say anything that isn't the Z170 or Z270, then memory frequency becomes less of an issue. The H170, H110 and B150 chipsets, for example, all support a maximum DDR4 memory speed of just 2133 MHz. The H270 and B250 chipsets are also memory frequency limited. The the 6th gen Intel processors are again limited to 2133 MHz, while the 7th gen processors can use DDR4-2400 memory. As a side note, DDR4-2133 memory doesn't actually operate at 2133 MHz, as advertised by pretty much every manufacturer and board partner. As this is double data rate memory, it actually operates at 1066 MHz, but rather than be technical and go against the grain, we will submit to the marketing lingo and just call it 2133 MHz to avoid confusing anyone. Right, so assuming you have either a Z170 or Z270 motherboard, then there is going to be a huge range of DDR4 memory speeds available to you. Uh, speeds ranging from DDR4-2133 all out to DDR4-4000 and even faster. Realistically though, you're really going to be deciding between modules rated at 2400 MHz to about 3400 MHz. The other things to consider here are the price and latency, the latter of which is often described as memory timings. Anyway, giving us a clear picture of how timings and frequency impact performance of the new KB Lake processors, I have done a little benchmarking. Before we jump to the game results, here's a quick look at the impact memory frequency has on bandwidth. Using DDR4-2133 memory, we are limited to 22.8GB per second. Meanwhile, moving to 2666 memory, the bandwidth increased by 21%. We see a further 20% bump in bandwidth when jumping to the DDR4 3600 memory. That said, this sweet spot does appear to be DDR4 3400 memory. This is the last test we're going to be looking at before the gaming benchmarks, I promise. It's interesting to see how the increased bandwidth impacts performance in the 7-zip application. Although the gains are consistent, we only see a 3% improvement in performance when jumping all the way from DDR4 2133 memory to the fastest memory tested DDR4 3600. So not all applications will benefit greatly from the increased memory bandwidth. Okay, so first up we have Battlefield 1, which we are testing with a Titan XP at 1080p. We do see consistent gains as the memory frequency increases, though it has to be said that there is just a 7% increase in performance for the minimum frame rate when going from DDR4 2133 all the way up to DDR4 3600. Another game I tested was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and unfortunately it didn't become apparent that there was a 125 FPS cap until I was well into the testing. Since I had the results, I decided to include them anyway, as they could be useful once we moved to the 4K resolution. 
Finally, the last game I tested was Gears of War 4, which is known to be a very demanding game on the CPU. Here we see a reasonable 13% boost in performance when going from DDR4 2133 to DDR4 3600. Still, I was using a Titan XP here at 1080p, so you do have to wonder what the gains would be like under more realistic conditions. Well, these numbers look quite different to the Battlefield 1 results seen previously. Here we see virtually no difference in performance between the DDR4-2133 and DDR4-3600 memory when gaming with the Titan XP at 4K. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has now dropped down to 75 FPS, and while that is well below the 125 FPS cap we previously saw, increasing the memory speed didn't improve the frame rate. Even in Gears of War 4, where we previously saw a 13% performance boost from the lowest clocked memory to the fastest, we now just see a 3.5% variation in performance at 4K. So the moment the GPU becomes the performance limiting factor, which is almost always when gaming, increasing the CPU's memory bandwidth does little to nothing to aid system performance performance. For the most part, high-speed DDR4 isn't really going to improve the gaming experience. Perhaps those rocking a high refresh rate monitor might benefit from the high memory frequency, but for everyone else it isn't really necessary. One last thing I just want to look at briefly are memory timings. As you can see, as the memory timings are relaxed, the memory bandwidth slowly falls away. The impact timings have on bandwidth isn't nearly as significant as the frequency though. From CL16 to CL18, we only see a 2% reduction in bandwidth. Meanwhile, previously, we saw a 4% reduction when going from DDR4 3400 to 3200, and then from 3200 down to 2800, a reduction in bandwidth by a further 7%. Here we see well under a 1% reduction in performance when testing the various memory timings using 7-zip. Finally, using Gears of War 4, we see virtually no difference in performance when tweaking the memory timings. So in the end, memory timings and frequency don't have a great impact on gaming performance. Therefore, it really comes down to price. Given that there are quite large bandwidth gains to be had when going with faster memory, I would still recommend buying the fastest memory possible. I just don't recommend hitting yourself with any kind of serious price premium to get it. For example, G-Skills Rip Jaws 4 16GB dual channel DDR4-2133 kit starts at $85 US. But for $5 more you can purchase their Rip Jaws 5 DDR4-3000 kit, and for another $5 lands you the Rip Jaws 5 DDR4-3200 kit. Beyond that though, things do start to get a bit out of control. The cheapest DDR4-3400 kit, which is another Rip Jaws 5 memory kit, costs $130. Not outlandish, but that's almost a 40% premium over the DDR4-3200 stuff for no real gain. As a side note, I'd just like to point out that G-Skill hasn't sponsored this video, but they have sent us a shipload of memory in the past, and with it being so competitively priced, it works well for these examples. So in summary, if pricing in your region reflects what we just saw, then I recommend pairing your KB Lake or Skylake processor with DDR4 3000 to 3200 memory. For the past year, we've used DDR4 3200 memory in our Core i7 6700K test machine, and it's worked out very nicely. I will provide some links in the video description for some memory over at Amazon I recommend checking out. Anyway, that's all from me on this one. Just remember, get the fastest memory you can while avoiding spending a huge premium over the 2133 stuff. I'm your host Steve, and I hope to catch you on the next one.